level 8.3, which is the law of cosines. So we are at the last stop for level 8. We, there are a couple other sections in the book if you wanted to explore those, but for our sake, we're just going to drop it at right triangles, law of sines, then law of cosines. So with law of cosines, we will only use this once because it's a little more complicated, and it's when we have side angle side or side side side. So when we have side angle side triangles or side 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 triangles, we use the law of cosines. This yields exactly one result, and it looks very familiar. So you might be wondering why we have these three formulas. Well, the best way I can explain this, if C is the longest side, this looks exactly like the Pythagorean theorem. And then we just add on this extra piece. This extra piece is the correction factor for our triangle not being a right triangle. So either we have c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine c, or b squared equals a squared plus c squared minus 2ac cosine b, and a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine a. If you notice, the, thing, the side on the left side and the angle that we're finding are on the opposites. And then the numbers that are on the right side are also multiplied by the cosine of that angle, 2ab, a squared, b squared. A squared, b, a squared, c squared, 2ac, b squared, c squared, 2bc. So again, we are only using this formula for side angle side, and then we can go back and use the easier formula with law of sines um, to find out the rest of the information. So again, side, angle, side, or side, side, side. So solve the triangle. A, B, C. So we have C right here. We, we have information about A and B. So we have side, angle, side. So what are we going to do? We're going to find little c first. c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine c. I'm just going to write the formula first, then we can plug in our information. So c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2 times 2 times 3 times cosine of 60. Now, if we know our unit circle, we know that cosine of 60 is 1 half, um, but I can just type this into my calculator. So I have 4 plus 9 minus 2 times 2 times 3 times cosine 60. I hit enter, I get 7. So I get c squared equals the square root of 7, which I'm going to just approximate for us. Uh, square root said answer, which is about 2.65. Okay, so if this is 2.65, we only need to do this once. Then use law of signs. Now we can do law of signs. So we can say sine 60 over square root 7, I'll be exact, equals sine a over 2. So a equals inverse sine of 2 sine 60 over square root 7, which means a is, again, got to go to our calculator, inverse sine of... 2 sine 60 divided by the square root of 7, control enter, we get 40.89 degrees, 40.89 degrees, so that means B has to be 180 minus 60 minus 40.89, so again B would be 180 minus 60 minus 40. 79.11 degrees.
So just to recap, we find our missing side using the law of cosines. Then we're going to use the law of sines or our information about right triangles to find everything else. Okay, let's flip it over and we have one more example. So with example two, uh, it says solve the triangle, which is pictured right here, and we're given three sides. So with side, 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 always find largest angle first. If you find the largest angle first, then uh, no ambiguous case. That's the nice thing. You can choose whatever side you want to find, but after that, you might have to worry about if there's one solution or two solutions or no solutions. You know that there's at least one solution, so there might be another one. So to save yourself any error, always start with the biggest side first. How do you know the biggest side? It's across, or the biggest angle, it's always across from the, the largest side. So we're gonna say, we're gonna write the formula. C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus two AB cosine C. C squared is six, so 36 equals. A squared is 16, B squared is nine minus two times four times three times cosine of C. Now it's just some simple math. So 16 plus nine is 25, uh, minus 25 here. We get 11 equals eight 24. So then I'm gonna divide both sides by 24. 11 over 24 equals cosine C. Now C equals inverse cosine of 11 over 24. Go to our trusty calculator. Inverse cosine of 11 over 24. We get 62.72 degrees. So C equals 62.72 degrees. That is our largest angle. I have to find one more angle. Doesn't matter. I'm gonna, so I'm gonna make that note for you guys. Find one more angle using law of sines. Okay, so finding one more angle, let's find A. So sine A over four equals sine 62.72 over six. So sine A equals four sine 62.72 all over six. So A equals inverse sine of that whole thing. So I know you're writing, I'll move this over. So trig inverse sine of four times sine 62.72 that makes that 62, all over six. Hit control enter, I get 36.34. So that means B is 180 minus 62.72 minus 36.34. So B is, I'm just gonna type this off screen, Hundred and ten point ninety four. B, this is A, this is C. So what do we do? We found the largest angle, then we did the law of sines, and then we used facts about triangles to find the third side. Okay. One more story problem, and then you guys are done with level eight. So with example three. A motorized sailboat leaves Naples, Florida, okay, so spring break area, bound for Key West 150 miles away. Maintain a constant speed of 15 miles per hour, but encounter heavy crosswinds, strong currents, the crew finds after four hours the sailboat is off course by 20 degrees. 
So in this picture, they're off by 20 degrees. This is 150 miles away. And of course, if they're going 15 miles per hour and they go four hours, that's 60 miles. Um, how far is the boat away from Key West at this time? So what they want you to find is this piece. So if you look, they have side, angle, side. So I want to find this third side. So we're going to say x squared equals 60 squared plus 150 squared minus 2 times 60 times 150 cosine 20. That, that's just calculator work. So 60 squared plus 150 squared minus 2 times 60 times 150 times cosine of 20. Enter, and then we're going to take the square root of that answer. Square root of that answer. I get 95.84 I have 95 point x equals 95.84 miles away. Now it's asking, through what angle should the sailboat turn to correct the course? So if this boat is going straight this way, I want to find this angle. But this angle is not part of our triangle. We can find this large angle. We know the three sides. So we can do, let's call that, um, let's call that A. So we have A squared, this is part B, A squared equals B squared plus 95.84 squared minus 2 times 60 times 95.84 cosine of A. Okay, so what I want to do is I'm going to write this out. I'm going to have 150 squared minus 60 squared minus 95.84 squared. That's some number. I'm going to divide it by negative 2 times 60 times 95.84 and I get this number and then I'm going to find uh, the inverse cosine of that answer. So angle A, if I leave this on the screen, is 147.64 degrees. A equals 147.64 degrees. So theta equals 180 minus A. So if I just did 180 minus A, I get 32.36 degrees. That means they have to turn this boat 32.36 degrees to get back to Key West. So how much time has been added onto the trip because of this? So normally, if they're traveling 15, uh, so C, normally it would take 10 hours. How do I know that? The distance from Naples to Key West is 150, and they're going 15 miles an hour. So that's 150 divided by 15. Now, they already traveled 60, and they have to go another 95.84. So 60 plus 95.84 is the new total distance. They have to go 100, now they have to go 155.84 miles total, and they're going 15 miles an hour. So if I divide that by 15, let's get that back on the screen, that's an extra point That's an extra 0.3893 repeated, or an extra 23 minutes.
So yeah, story problems, all based off of law of sines, law of cosines. We can do all of these. We should be actually pretty good at these by now. Okay, so there's one more worksheet that we'll spend on this and then we will have our test. Thank you.